So there's one ingredient that's made its way into even organic food that I think is so important. And, and it's an ingredient that you will find in almost 90, I'd say 95% of processed foods. It's very hard not to find this ingredient unless it's like a one ingredient product like rice or brown rice or, you know, a dried mango or something like that. So it's called natural flavor. And natural flavor can literally mean a thousand different chemicals behind that one specific label because the FDA does not require food manufacturers to tell you the chemical compounds behind that flavor. Hmm. And that flavor can include MSG, by the way, and other solvents that are genetically engineered, but also, so that also could be, you know, um, you know, contaminated with Roundup glyphosate. And so then, then also it's got that engineering component where they've taken the same scientists that made tobacco, addictive and they've taken that same science and they've applied it to food and created these chemicals. So we have a chemical addiction to the food. We remember the flavor. We remember the taste and the texture. We constantly crave it. Our mouths start to water when we think about a food. So like when I think of Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A used to have like over a hundred ingredients in their, their sandwich. They've started to reduce it because of my activism. And also I met with the head met with them and, you know, talked to them about their ingredients, but there's one ingredient that they like will not remove. And that's MSG because it's like the thing that makes your mouth water when you think about that sandwich. And even though I haven't had it in like 15 years, my mouth still waters and I still remember the flavor. And that's why you also remember the difference in what a McDonald's hamburger tastes like versus a Wendy's hamburger versus a Burger King hamburger, the way it smells, everything is engineered to yeah. like literally hijack your entire old factory system. There's there's something very gratifying about fast food burgers. I haven't had one for I don't know how long, but when I I still have very fond memories of fast food burgers. Yeah. You know, I think I think yeah. it's that. It's like it's it's engineered specifically to hit you in all the right spots. Right. It's fair. They did a great job. And Science is powerful. It is so powerful, but also, yeah. you know, this <laughs> natural flavor that's being added to all of the products out there, it's there to, it's there so that the food manufacturers can use less real food in their products because real yeah. food tastes great, but also real Expensive. food disintegrates, right? Over time, like it gets bad, it goes rotten. And so like, I, you know, a friend of mine, Dr. Anna Maria Temple, she's an amazing pediatrician. She <laughs> has a plate of Chick-fil-A. It's been sitting in her pantry for the last six weeks. It might be eight weeks now. And she's like, Bonnie, there's no mold. The, the update, there's no mold. And I'm like, this is crazy. Like yeah. food should break down, right? You got to think about what happens when you eat this food and it doesn't break down in your well, system. If it wasn't alive, it can't die. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. That's, that's great. I'm going to reuse that. That's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I think mean, that's that's yeah, yeah that's the thing. And if it's not alive, it it ends up you have to utilize. This gets into new age weeds that maybe you could fill in with some, some more scientific jargon, but uh, or language. Um, but if something has a lower life force, you know, it's more dead. Yeah. Then you're going to have to extend your own life force in order to vivify that food like substance and wow. metabolize it and turn it into energy. But it ends up be becoming I don't know how it would work exactly, but that's just my like new age kind of jargony type perspective on it. But it feels like that. Like there's certain food like substances that you can put in your body or I can put in my body. And it feels like I almost had to extend or expend energy in order to refine homeostasis within myself to be able to utilize those calories mm-hmm. compared to something that has you know, a, quite a quite a high concentration of this life force thing, which maybe we can talk about. Uh, you might have more scientific language of, of what that means exactly, or you might just disagree with me as well. Uh, but it seems like there's kind of it's like I'm this this living, sentient, vibrating being, and then there's other there's other energetic substances that I can place into this system. When some when that substance is higher vibrational or has more life force, it increases my life force. When it's lower, then I have to extend my life force in order to refine homeostasis. I could probably just probably cut that out of the podcast because I don't think that made any like scientific sense. Well, it doesn't uh, even. But that's kind of the way that I feel with eating. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't even, and that's this is what's what's is so important is like to to recognize you don't need to be a scientist, or food scientist, or rocket scientist to know how to eat. 
Yeah. It's a very intuitive experience. Like I can tell you when I eat the microgreens out of my front porch every yeah. single day, I feel a level of energy I never thought was possible because they're sure. so alive. I'm picking them from my garden. There's no interaction with anyone else. It's not going into a plastic bag. It's not sitting on a shelf for a week before I get to it. Like it's coming straight from the ground or an yeah. above ground planter in my case. And the energy that I feel doesn't need to be described scientifically. It's just intuitive in that I know that's so good for me. But when you do look at the science of microgreens, for example, you'll notice that like a microgreen of a broccoli or a microgreen of a kale sprout is, you know, 200 times more nutritious mm. than the grown counterpart. And it's so cool when you do look at the science behind stuff and like, you know, prove that what I'm feeling is actually what I'm feeling. However, you yeah. just feel it. And I, I just challenge everyone to like, one day just decide not to eat any processed foods for like, you know, a while and see what happens. Because yeah, give it a week. I mean, I tell you, it is like night and day, you're I think it takes, it's, they say it takes about around 21 days to really hone in on a new dietal change like that and to really receive the benefit and then start to reprogram your brain, especially if someone who's been eating a lot of processed foods. Mm -hmm.